What is going on everybody? Welcome to episode 5 of For the Love of the Game. As you guys saw in the last episode, we just got done wrapping up our 500,000 Sakrai Trash goal. We have some pretty big plans for that money, so let's get to work. Before we jump into the good stuff, we gotta get our seasonal done on our Draconia. There are so many rewards this season that are actually so good in terms of loot scrolls, crons, and just stacks in general. So much value here and I gotta get it done because I've been slacking on it. So I uh, made the mistake of doing the Mountain of Eternal Winter for the skill points. I regret that very much right now, to be honest with you, because this quest line takes forever and I absolutely CBA to do it. But, you know, we've, we've already made our fucking bed. We gotta sleep in it now. So we're gonna get this done and then we're gonna start cranking out our Tuvala uh, accessories and our armors and weapons. So we spent a lot of time finishing up that quest line and doing the other sites of Medea mini quest line. We had to kill all the mobs in Medea, and uh, that was really annoying because I did not have a horse, so it kind of sucked. So we have our Pride Tuvala, and we got the level 60 and 59 rewards with the Pen Tuvala earring and the Pen Tuvala ring. Uh, we're currently at a pretty good point for the um, season pass, but we're gonna stop for now and kind of give ourselves a little bit of time to set up and really bang this out and finish this off in the next video. So I think we got a, good, got a lot of progress done, got a good ways in. We just got to, you know, do a little bit of enhancing and some other random quest lines and uh, other stuff, and we should be good to go. Like I mentioned in the previous video, we were going to use a big portion of the money that we made from that trash loot, that big grind that we did to buy some life skilling gear. Uh, and that's exactly what we did. We took pretty much the entirety of the money from the trash loot, the nine bill that we got from selling the 500,000 Sakrai trash. And we used it to buy Tetmanos alchemy clothes as well as Tetmanos gathering clothes. Now we bought those for about four and a half bill each. And honestly, kind of expensive from what I would have liked to pay for them, but it is what it is. I mean, at the end of the day, the market is always going up and down and I try to buy things at the right time but it's not as easy as it seems because I had plans for that life scaling gear and I needed it for the next grind I'm going to start doing. We've got 2500 abyssal essence that we need to make into frenzy drafts in order to kind of cash in on a big portion of our Sakrai grind. Now my initial plan was to iron man essentially all of the materials that I needed to make the entire frenzy drafts from the demi-human elixirs, all the sap, all the everything else that you need to make those. For the frenzy elixirs, same situation. But what I ended up deciding to do, and this is just purely because of the fact that demi-human elixirs are terrible money and you lose money making them. Uh, I, I went ahead and I bought a bunch of them and I should have enough here to be able to actually make the uh, frenzy drafts uh, when, I, when I do get the frenzy elixirs for them. So... So instead, we'll only be focusing on the Frenzy Elixirs for now, which again, isn't super good money per hour or anything, but I kind of wanted to get some life skilling in because it's been like 13 days of me not life skilling really at all, and I kind of miss it, so I want to do it. I'm currently at the North Kai Mountain Rotation, getting a bunch of different saps. I'm getting uh, Pine Sap, Cedar Sap, and some Fur Sap here and there. Uh, I'm doing this rotation mostly because of the Cedar Sap for the Frenzy Elixirs, but I actually really do want to kind of stockpile up on saps. Uh, and these are actually pretty useful for certain uh, other things. So I do want to get as much as I can. And I feel like this is pretty good value for, you know, my time gathering here, even though it does kind of slow down my Cedar Sap gains. Uh, it, it won't be that big of a deal. I'll still get it pretty quickly. We're currently at Guru One Gathering with about 60% EXP in. So probably not going to get a level from this little grind, but who knows, I'm popping EXP buffs and everything, and I may just stay for the level if I get close at all, so we'll have to see. And here's a look at the life skilling setup I'm using right now. It's full Trimanos accessories with Tech Gathering Clothes and Tech Gathering Tool. Not a crazy amount of mastery, but it is okay. I'm up almost up to 1700 because of the uh, little life, uh, life skill loot scroll buffy thingy that I gotten from all the attendance rewards and whatnot. So I'm popping those here, just trying to kind of speed that up and get a little bit more EXP as well. So almost up to 1700 mastery, which is actually pretty dope. But yeah, I'm going to kick back, relax, continue to gather and get these gains, get this, get this EXP, get this sap and, uh, I'll check back in once we got to a, a good stopping point where we have all the cedar sap that we need in order to make the frenzy elixirs because once we do we'll be able to hit up that alchemy tool and make a lot of money 
it should be a very nice payday and I have a lot of plans with that money. So I'm really looking forward to getting that out of the way. So right now, one of the biggest bottlenecks that I have for making my frenzy elixirs is the fruit of Crimson Flame. I've got pretty much all the stuff I need for the frenzy elixirs outside of these fruits and getting them is a real pain. There are so many orders up on the market right now. If we take a look, there is 164,000 orders and I've only gotten seven filled so far. I need about 900, maybe even a little bit more in order to get all the crafts that I need to make the frenzy elixirs to make the frenzy drafts. And I've got 163. Uh, I've been doing the pumpkins here for a little bit now and it's honestly going really slow. If I recall, what I can do to maybe get a couple more fruits is to use these mysterious seeds, shake them with the magical pumpkin seeds, and then actually get a bunch of crimson uh, fruits from that. I'm not 100% sure if that's really worth doing. I have a bunch of these mysterious seeds, but I do use them for stuff, and I kind of wanted to save them. But at this point, since I've got pretty much everything else I need, I'm going to be waiting like a week or so for the actual fruits to, you know, be made from the magical pumpkins like breeding them this way so i don't know unless i get a buy order i might actually consider doing it but right now this is looking like the biggest time gate and i tried to prep this as much as i could as i was doing the you know 500,000 sakura trash but it just still hasn't been enough it's getting these fruits has been very very slow so we'll have to see how long it takes me to actually get this going you know, it's so funny. I've had this unicorn for probably two, three weeks now, and I have literally never taken it into the desert. This is the first time I have brought my unicorn out to the desert to actually run in it. And oh my God, does this feel so good? Oh, look at this. I'm hauling ass. Oh man, look at that. I love this horse so much. I love my unicorn. It's amazing. So why I'm actually running out to the desert right now is because I'm about to do... Ooh, is that Nuver? Hello? Nuver, buddy! What are we doing? Dink! See you, buddy. I gotta go. I gotta go. Anyways, um... So, yeah. I, uh... I'm about to do a trade uh, crate turn in here. I have a bunch of crates in Valencia City that I've moved over and uh, some of them are from pre-buff to the cost of the, the crates. So I'm not gonna make as much money as it looks like, but I do have a lot of crates to turn in and I'm honestly pretty excited. I gotta go to sharing, so I need to go more Northeast here. Thank God I have this compass. So um, I'm gonna be turning these in and I need that silver to be able to purchase my Libra gloves. I've already got my muskins. Uh, they're here somewhere. Oh, here they are. Yeah, so I've got my I've got my muskins already. I've bought those. I bought them from a friend. So I've got one of my guildies names on it, which is dope. So I need to get some levers and I need to get that money. And I need to get these levers before the price continues to go up. It's kind of seen a spike here in the last little bit. So, you know, overall, we're at the highest it's been in three months. Uh, so I kind of want to wait and maybe see if it's going to go down. But I don't know if it is. I know a lot of people are trying to swap over to evasion for whatever reason. So... I kind of want to get these now so I don't have to worry about it. And this trade money, this trade crate money is going to be quite a bit of extra cash. So we're going to get the sharing buff right now and we're going to buff up and get all the stuff we need for the uh, for the big old juicer crate turn in. All right, we got our buff. This uh, sharing buff doubles the trade goods coming through the desert, which is really, really, really nice. It just it gives a fat buff to the money you make from trading, which is great. Uh, in terms of everything else I'm gonna be running, I'm gonna be just popping full buffs for EXP when I do these crate turn turn ins. Uh, it should be a good amount of EXP. I'm currently master uh, 13, uh, one percent. So I'm hoping to get like a level or two, maybe. Um, I doubt I get more than that, obviously, because you know trading is kind of hard to level up. But I've got a lot of crates and I've got the artifacts set up as well, so I get a little bit extra trading EXP here as well, which is nice. Um, but yeah, I'm uh, I'm hoping. For at least a couple bill out of these uh, crates and I'm gonna check back in with you guys after we've gotten all them turned in because it does take quite a long process running back from the storage you know getting them on the horse and all that other stuff so I'll let you know and we'll see how much money we've got at the end of the uh, turn ins and see how much money we actually made from the couple months of processing uh, semi AFK 
Alrighty, turned all the crates in that we had. Like I said, most of them were pre-buffed crates. So the values of them were a lot lower than what you'd see right now currently if you're making crates, but we still pulled away 2.6 spill, which is pretty nice considering the fact that the shit is literally while I'm doing my work, you know? So it's super AFK, really easy to reset. And I still have a bunch of crates that I'm currently making right now over in Grana. So I do have, you know, some more crates that I can turn in and these are the new ones as well so I'll have those which will be really nice I'm going to continue to do so and continue to make them which will be really nice uh you know something just kind of passive that I'm going to be making which is great uh passive income in this game is really nice put myself up to five bill which is great um only like six bill until we get an order on our Libras. a lot of great things I keep saying great I don't know why but Money's up good. I'm feeling real good. So one of the other grinds that I've been working on is finishing off the embers, the 100 embers for another flame. When I initially did the flame grind, I got up to 60 embers and then got the raw drop. If you guys have not seen me get that raw drop, you guys got to go watch that YouTube short that I put up. It is absolutely crazy how it happened. Highly recommend checking that out if you haven't. It's You guys are going to be you guys are gonna hate me but it's it, I, I decided that you know i since i had 60 embers i wanted to finish them off anyways jade forest got buffed with the recent agris changes making it even better to grind with agris which is really nice because it was already pretty decent to grind it has a lot of kaffir drops and obviously if i get giga carried i can get another flame drop which would be absolutely insane but at the end of the day worst case i get a good amount of money per hour with the agris around like 700 or so mil an hour including all the Kaffirs and all the other stuff, as well as a little two bill payday from the flame. So I've been working on this for a little bit now, and I honestly love the Jade Forest grind. I kind of wanted to make a video talking about why I think this grind is actually so fun, because time flies for me when I grind at Jade Forest, and especially because I don't actually need to get the embers. Like I'm just grinding there, you know, with the Agris for money, as well as just getting embers here and there. I'm not as stressed out about it. it makes the grind so much better and i've just been pumping it out and uh i will check back in once we finally get the rest of the embers that we need to get this flame i'm gonna sell this flame bro hey where'd it go Oh, here it is. I'm about to make someone's fucking day with this, dude. Let's go. Dang. So we have been doing a good amount of alchemy, and with selling the trash loot and the flame, we brought ourselves up to 11.2 bill. We have a lot of extra stuff we're still selling right now, and we still also have a good portion. We got 1,500 abyss lessons, which is still a lot of money. Uh, we're waiting on the flames, the or the crimson flame fruits. So we're waiting on those. Once we get that, we'll be able to pump even more money from that, which will be great. Uh, we've got some giant straps here that we're selling as well because I actually had a literally all the materials I needed to make them in my storage, and I bought them forever ago, like like six months ago at this point, uh, for really cheap. So we made stonks on those for 1.3 mil each, which is great. Um, so now we have got enough money to finally put our order up on our new piece. Well, soon to be new piece, new piece of gear, our pen levers to finish off the evasion set that we're working on. Like I said, we got the, the pen muskies right here already. If you guys haven't been hanging out in the stream over at twitch.tv slash stratified, you guys probably a little confused as to what is exactly going on. Allow me to explain a little further. So before we're able to do any sort of changes to the gear at all, we need two specific things. We need our Jin Harfia crystals for our evasion sets. We need the 20 evasion from these. If you don't have these for evasion, it's just not good. It's just, you're not really running evasion. You're just kind of trolling. So we need these to buy. We've had this order up for a while now. So we're waiting very patiently for that as well as uh, the Mind Stone, the Lightstone of Wind Mind for the blur set that we need for our evasion set. We do have a budget set right now in our artifacts. It's the uh, Warrior's Bloodline set, but we really want to make sure we get the blur set because blur is very, very good for evasion in terms of the raw stats. So we're waiting for that as well. Now, once we get those couple of very key items, we are going to be swapping the Kaffirs from the Urgons, the Begs, and the Nuver and moving them over to the Lieber, Muskin, and Kudum giving us a C20 evasion set. 
with a C15 Kudum. As you guys can see in our inventory, we have a lot of Kafras here right now. So we're gonna be able to eat the loss of Kafras as well as the cost of swapping over fairly easily. And we're gonna take all the extra Kafras that we get and put them back into the Uragons and the Bags and the Nuver up to C7 in terms of the Nuver. Uh, but we're gonna cap the armors out at C13. Now you guys may be asking, why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just put the Kafras into the evasion armor that you have right now and just go from there and not lose money on the tax? Well, the biggest issue right now is that Begs and Uragons can function without being C20 because currently the way I've built my armors out and built my build out for my DR set is that I am glass cannon regardless. I've got human damage, human damage, human damage here. I'm not built to be tanky. And DR in general is not really that tanky, especially because I'm not, you know, putting on two narcs. I don't have double runes. I don't have a Voltara. I'm not trying to be tanky with my DR set. So I don't really need the C20 in my, my DR set because I will be dying very quickly regardless. But it is very important to have the C20 in the evasion set because being evasion without C20 feels absolutely horrendous. You're just not tanky. You're just not that tanky. And that's the whole point of being evasion is to be tanky and have that ability to be tanky. So that's why we're doing this and making that swap over. It is just too expensive to go from, you know, C1 to C20 in the, you know, in the Muskin and Liebers and Kudum. And it just isn't really efficient to do it that way, considering the fact that when I want to be DR and I want to use my DR set, I'm already built glass cannon anyway. So it's not like I'm going to be dying that much faster. Uh, I'll die in like maybe a second sooner, but I'm already dying in like two, three skills as is right now. So it's not a huge difference in overall tankiness, but my damage will be there and it'll feel really, really good. And that is the whole point for this specific build and this specific setup. Have my evasion for an evasion class that's relatively tanky. And then I'll be able to have the ability to play a DR set and go into open world or go into node wars more specifically um, and just pump damage with my DR set and one shot people and also be one shot. And I just think it'll be a lot of fun to do it this way. And I've kind of got it all planned out. And it feels like, you know, for the cost investment, it is a lot of money. Uh, keep in mind, it is quite a lot of money to do this, but I think I just have more fun doing it this way than, you know, getting double pandistos or something like that. So I just, you know, why not, right? Why not? Uh, I'm playing this game now just for fun. So why not do that? Because like I said, I think, it's, I think it'd be more fun. So let me know down in the comments what you guys think about this sort of setup. And if you guys would ever consider doing something like this yourself. I know for me, it gives me a lot of flexibility with my tags. So if I was to play, you know, a class like Mystic, I could actually have an evasion set on it and be very, very tanky with it. As well as, you know, playing my Zerker with the DR set and still pumping damage from range, which is really, really fun. Let me know if you would actually consider doing this as well. And I will see you guys in the next episode of For the Love of the Game, where we will have this setup up and operational, barring we don't get absolutely screwed on the buyers of the Harfias and the Mindstone. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.